ever made. Lisa Tommy Zonneville from Prolific Pulse Press. I'm so happy to welcome Ariana Harris today. Um, she is the poet and writer of Lost X Mental Illness. Beautiful book. I read it all the way through again today so I could be really fresh and um, showed it off a little bit at the coffee shop this morning. And believe me, this cover has rave reviews. Anybody that sees it goes, wow. Great job. You know what? Me too, actually. Everyone has actually said to me, like, hey, that's a really good cover. So that's that's awesome to hear. And I noticed, it took me a while to notice this, but on the cover, there's a tear. Yes. And it, yes. I, it took me probably about five or six tries to look at my, like, wait, there's a tear. A yeah, I wanted it to be really mm -hmm. subtle. So that that's mm -hmm. awesome that you noticed it, but it took a bit. That's good. I like that. That's awesome. Yeah. I love it. So um, anyway, and it just happens to be Mental Health Awareness Month. So that nice. I didn't... The irony. Oh. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so Ariana, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from and what's happening. Yeah, absolutely. My name is Ariana um, Hollingsworth, but I published under Ariana Harris um, as a tribute to my mother. I grew up in Chicago, Illinois. I am 25 just recently this year. Um, I am currently in school to pursue an English literature degree. Um, I hope to take that with me to law school, fingers crossed, because it's a difficult path. Um, yeah, I... Sorry, you just wanted to know about me, right? How, how did you end up from Chicago to, to Springfield, Missouri? I've been to both. I'm like, yeah. Chicago, big town, and Springfield. Springfield it's, a big town, but it's not the same as in Missouri. <laughs> mm -mm, no. Um, so actually, my brother came here, and I was young, and my mother followed my brother. So I was not old enough to stay in Chicago, so I had to come um, I actually graduated from Lebanon, Missouri. So, okay. Are you? Yeah. Do you have plans to go back to Chicago? No, I actually I don't. I do not. I go see family here and then, but I, I don't have plans to permanently go back now. So, tell me a little bit about um, how it is that you came into poetry. How old were you when you started writing? So. I was very young when I started writing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you know what Wattpad is, but I was writing on Wattpad at like the age of 11. Um, I was creating my own small fictional book that, you know, it was, you post a chapter every week or you made your own schedule. I was very young when I started writing. I always knew that I wanted to be a writer, but I did not know that I wanted to be a poet um, quite so young. That came a bit later. So. Mm -hmm. About how old were you when you discovered poetry? I would say I was like 17. It was way after I discovered that I liked to write. Um, and so as soon as I felt like I connected with poetry, it was like, I want to be able to do this too. And I want my words to make somebody feel how I felt reading these. So it didn't come until like after high school, honestly, mm -hmm. until I started taking college classes for poetry. Wonderful. Do you have a favorite uh, form of poetry you like to write or are you pretty much freestyle? No, I don't have um, a favorite form. I actually, I'm very chaotic in my writing style. Um, I tend to steer less towards structural, structural poetry to focus more of the content of it. Yeah, I would say that true from reading your book. It um, yeah. definitely does not follow a certain form. However, it certainly has the, the right kind of structure for poetry. Um, yeah. very good form as far as following the the nuances of poetry and and so you have all the, the gems that are, make a poem a poem so kudos to you for figuring that out and, thank you you know we find that um we keep trying different things and then we find that niche that works for you and then down the road you might try some other things you never know yes i definitely have plans to try other things yeah so with this particular book, what 
fueled the poems in this book? I, I know, but I want you to tell us. Yeah, of course. Uh, so my mother actually fueled this after she passed. Um, I kind of told myself that I would actually do what she had always wanted me to do, which was um, write a book. And she was leaning more towards a book of poems. And so in doing so, I found a way to heal enough to attempt to move forward um, in my grief and also dealing with my mental health issues. Um, and so I realized how common the situation must probably be and how many people deal with a version of the same difficulty. Um, and so I decided for them, for us, I was going to create a tool for the next person to use that might help them kind of get through it because it's it's a definitely a difficult situation. Um, you don't really realize how polarizing it can be being mentally ill and also dealing with a a really close death. Um, it's it's not the it's not unfortunately it's a different a different uh, path than the normal grief path. So mm-hmm. it's it's difficult. Yeah, well, grief is something that is just an ongoing thing. It does not have a time stamp on it. It doesn't no. turn off at a certain time. Um, no, unfortunately, <laughs> though that would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, I know for myself. I mean, my mother's been gone many many years and you know mother's day weekend is hard yeah. um, certain holidays I, I have traditions yeah um, to remember her and i'm working on a book of poetry memoir poetry and um, a lot of my mom's voices coming through on that I when you that. were writing your poems did you experience that as well you feel like your mom's voice was coming through Yes. um, So my mom was actually a spoken word poet um, herself, which I always admired um, the way that she could just leave everything on the on the page, on the stage. She did perform a bit as well. Um, So when I was writing a bit more of the difficult ones, which I would say the uh, beginning of my manuscript, not the specific beginning poem, but when I first started writing uh, was the most difficult part because it was really fresh, the grief. I mean, I started writing um, in the hospital. You know, so I definitely felt like I heard, um, you know, her voice in my poetry and either, you know, she was helping me and hoping that I healed and that it was helpful. um, Or I kind of felt like that maybe my mom was sad for me, (laughs) that it was so difficult and this was the path that I had to go. But she, it also seemed like maybe my mom would be proud because she was a spoken word poet Mm -hmm. and she understood the strength of being able to express those emotions through poem. So exactly. I always felt like she was with me. Yeah. Always. She set forth that example. Yeah. You know, yeah. Oh, spoken word poetry is a whole different area yeah. that I am just in awe. Me too. Of people yeah. who can do this. It's like, how does this happen? I mean, yeah. it just amazes me. Wow. Me as well. I heavily agree. Heavily. I've always felt like it was, it's just like, for me, it's, I don't know. I feel like spoken words, like a really pure form of poetry Mm -hmm. and it's always emotional, no matter what the topic is for me. I mean, I don't know. I'm always crying. It could be like a topic meant to make you laugh and I'm probably going to cry. Yeah. Yeah. I get chill bumps whenever I hear somebody you know, do a really good spoken the word. The delivery, when it's really good, mm-hmm. it's great. Yeah. yeah. I'll sometimes go to on like YouTube and listen to yes. some of it. And it's like, blows my mind. It really does. Yeah. Yes. There's actually a few YouTube like pages that I actually follow for spoken words. So. Wonderful. Yeah. Now, have you ever gotten any recordings of your mom doing spoken word I have not um I know she's recorded herself before but I have never actually gotten any unfortunately so it's very sad Mm. but I do have some of her poems themselves just written down so Mm. that's that's awesome that's really Mm. nice have you thought about doing something with those I'm couldn't I'm yes I consider it yes Mm -hmm. nice Maybe a something in tandem uh, response poems to her poems would be kind of interesting. Yeah. yeah. What There's are a lot you? Of us there. What are you working on right now with poetry? You have another book under your belt? 
Yeah, I do. I'm actually working on a manuscript um, about uh, the difficulties of a um, abusive relationship in regard to mental, physical, um, emotional abuse and, you know, just working through that and how difficult that process is as it's a uh, personal experience of mine as well. Um, and writing about it has, of course, been healing for me. So I'm hoping praying that uh, when I get through the manuscripts, it's something that I feel like can be that for other people as well. So. Very important um, subject matter yeah. to, to write poetry about and perhaps will encourage others to write their own poetry um, in response to that. I've seen some really beautiful healing work done with that. And so I, I think you. that's excellent you know my my best to you as you to work on that project that's great thank you yeah so when you when you're writing a poem do you have a particular process that you go through a creative process that you do uh so for me it's i start with an idea or a thought that i've had or a feeling um that i've had and so I try to take whatever idea or thought that has informed words or feeling that is and make it a sentence. Um, just one sentence, not a poem yet, just one sentence. And so that first sentence helps to shape the others. Uh, but generally, I have a good idea of where I want to go once I've ironed out that first sentence and I've been able to put the feeling or the idea into words. Um, from there, it's just tweaking it again and again and again to get the idea in my head to look good on paper. Wonderful. Do you have any particular poets or writers that have been encouraged or that you kind of look up to with your work? Yeah. Um, aside from, you know, my mom, I've got, you know, Ruby Carr, um, you know, the the uh, you know, the uh Shakespeare for the dramatics. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh other than that, not any very specifics, but Ruby Carr, um mm -hmm. she I don't know, man. I I I listen to her or I read her poems, um, and I just feel simple or like I'm understood in the world, but still occasionally insignificant. Um, and so from that, I just I don't know. I kind of I kind of feel like a few of my poems are like a response to a few of hers. Uh, so. Yeah, she's a really big inspiration. I had a friend that actually opened for Ruby Carr recently, so I'm hoping that I can uh, get there. Wonderful. That would be awesome. Yeah. Would be right? Okay. Oh. Yeah. And one day somebody will say, I look forward to opening for Ariana Harris. Yes, I can't wait for that day. That's yeah. going to be mind blowing. Well, claim it. Claim it. I will. Absolutely. I claim that. <laughs> I really I feel like you are there um in your poems um you are there as far as someone opening your book and reading your poetry um there people have got to connect to the, with these poems and I yeah. can see where they would inspire another person to take a look at themselves and maybe write some words or start journaling or, or start healing and working on um, some things for themselves. So to me, awesome you, here. you know, you touch someone's heart, that heart touches somebody else's heart. You make it an impact in this world. Yes. Good for Man, you. That's the goal. That's definitely the goal. So thank you. So thank you so much, actually mm -hmm. so much. You know, I would love if you would read. Um, I can do that. I can do that. Absolutely. Okay. Give me one moment to pull that up. All right, so this is a favorite of mine. It's called Drifting Away. Um, again, this is one of the first ones that I wrote. So in the hospital, you know, right after they told us that uh, she wouldn't be coming back. So this is called Drifting Away. On these days, I'm proud and I cry for progress and healing because I've come to be friends, friendly with my grief. Blossoming in its darkness, we've come to an understanding. On days when I'm not so sad, I fear my friend will fade away, leaving behind old memories I've shelled, shelved, building dust like an unattended library, too brittle to remain whole. I worry that thoughts of my lost ones will cease playing on repeat in my head. 
I dread over the possibility that one day I'll forget the smallest of details. On these days when I'm not so sad, I am terrified. I actually had that one marked in my book. Um, oh. <laughs> it's one of my favorites of them. I, I love that one. I love that one. It makes me cry a lot um, when I read it alone. <laughs> Yeah, well, I could see why, because you can really connect, um, you know, with this poem, um, you know, who of us have not gone through that experience? I know I've gone through it one too many times of being in the room with someone who, when they were crossing over, and um, this really, you know, hits it home, hits home with that particular one. Yeah, there's not much like the feeling that you might forget somebody who has passed that you've loved with your entire soul. Mm -hmm. So it's like really, really terrifying. Um, and I actually, I struggled to put that one into words. I didn't feel like it was dramatic enough or that, it, that it came across enough. So I'm glad that you connected with it still. Absolutely. Yeah. How old were you when your mom passed away? My mom passed away just recently. We are three years and I'm 25. So I believe I was just about 21, 22. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And was it something that was expected or was this something that was? Um... Uh, no, my mother was healthy and young. Um, not at all expected. She actually passed. Um, from a blood clot, which actually is hereditary. So after this happened, you know, me and my sister were a bit in fear that we might have that same difficulty. Basically a blood clot traveled to her lung, um, stopped her ability to breathe. And then at that, that point when you're not getting air to your brain um, for an extended period of time, unfortunately, even though she was still breathing, um, there was no activity um, in her brain, so. Wow, sorry. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I actually I got the call at work. Uh I was I was actually clocked in um and I got the call because I was my mother's emergency contact and I'm the only one that was still here in Missouri. All my other siblings, I'm the youngest, so they're all older and scattered. And it was just me and mom here. So when I got the call, I was still working. Um gave my siblings the call, you know, everybody had to come out of state. So that was actually kind of difficult. But um, during that, those few days where everybody was coming out of state, that's where I wrote a few poems, um, sitting with mom in the hospital. So. Yeah. Well, one thing about it is that you were with her during that time. And, you know, I think that makes a big difference so that you were able to be there. Me too, I do too. Yeah. So um, well, I'm going to switch over to something a little bit lighter because this is okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. You know, how has it been for you since your book was released? Oh, it's been been awesome. Oh, um, it's a really good a really good reception to it. Um, it's really exciting. All of the books that I purchased on my end to. Um, so are gone. So that's fun. Um, a lot of people are interested in getting um, their family or their friends a copy. Um, a lot of people are e or uh, messaging, whether that's Facebook or Instagram, letting me know like, hey, this specific poem really did it for me, or this specific poem made me cry, or I really felt close to you when I read this one, or I felt like I was understood when I read this one. And those messages are they are everything. <laughs> I don't even care if like, I don't know, a lot of people aren't buying it, whatever, you know, people are messaging me saying that they get it or they felt gotten and it's, that was the whole point. So exactly. that's good. I don't yeah. think you can ask for anything more than that. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't even want anything it's else. Impacted <laughs> people's lives and made a difference and helped them find somebody was listening to them and also helped you see that people were listening to you i mean wow that's golden that's really yeah golden. yeah that's everything nothing else is <laughs> you know you know yeah so that's been great um like really great wonderful so maybe you'd like to read another poem okay this is growing up 
Mm -hmm. um, I wish I could age backwards, find a way to pack up this baggage that weighs on me. History might not repeat if I could be allowed to protect myself from the darkness which screams. I'd love to age backwards, begin anew, and remind myself of all the wonderful things I might do. That one particularly was when I was, it was a very dark time where I couldn't exactly, um, just, I couldn't feel as though I was moving forward as I should be um, in life just in general. And it was difficult because I felt like if my mom were here, maybe that wouldn't be the case um, because it was unfortunately difficult continuing with studies after mom passed. So I'm actually dealing with the fallout of um, failing a few courses. And so it was really, really um, healing to uh, write growing up because it felt like, okay, I can express this, put it on these pages and move forward. So that was good. We have something in common. I, I was... Um my last year of college when my mother passed away yeah. right during very finals. Difficult. <laughs> yeah, that's did. horrid yeah. finals yeah right during finals so my professors were all really nice about working with me yeah yeah so we have that in common as far as trying to be in school and dealing with you know tragedy you know we had some inkling of a timeline yeah so, you know, built difficult though. yeah how difficult yeah but it was my mother's dream that I graduate college so I didn't let it stop me and got sure. to do it so yeah exactly that's definitely why I'm still pushing forward I know mom would be like okay it was hard but get it together <laughs> yeah. so I'm I'm getting it together yeah so exactly what you know I just stayed focused and said well mom this is for you because she she didn't have beyond an eighth grade education, although to talk to her, you would think that she had a PhD. She was a brilliant mind. And so she wanted to see you know, her kids go on to college. And so she was very proud. So absolutely. I felt like yeah, I'm down the aisle with me. Absolutely. She probably definitely did. I'm actually the first generation college student in my family. My sisters and my brothers did not go. And I'm the youngest, so my mom was definitely like, "You need to finish as well." Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I believe she's right there watching over you. She's going to make sure you get through it. Absolutely. She is, <laughs> no matter is, what. Is there anything that I haven't asked you that you'd like to share? Um, I mean, you know, I would just like to say um, that I know for me. And I think for even everybody, everybody else, even if you're not a reader, um, literature can be really useful for a lot of different re a lot of different reasons. Um, and I really just think that anybody who hasn't been able to dive into the world of it, the world of literature, uh, should consider the benefits and give it a shot. And I would love if you started with me. Um, I want to say the book is available on Amazon and Kindle and physical book form. Um, you can also contact me directly for copies via my author page on Facebook. It is Ariana Harris Poetry. Um, and just for anyone who is thinking about publishing or trying to maybe go down that road, um, I just want to say that nobody who has ever done anything significant accomplished it on their first attempt. Um, don't stop, even when you think you have nothing to say sit in front of your laptop and stare at a blank page mm -hmm. make time to write whenever and wherever you can because it really it makes the biggest difference just any time that you have time and you have ideas and even when you don't sit in front of your laptop mm -hmm. thank you ariana beautiful words of wisdom yeah. wonderful to impart and on that i'm going to close out thank you everybody for listening thank you ariana for being here today and I hope you have a wonderful weekend and best wishes. When do you graduate college? Do you have a date? It should be 2025 if I keep on with. Yes. 2025. That's just around the corner. Yeah, it's ending of 2025 because I have summer courses, but it'll be okay. <laughs> we'll be okay. 
I know it will be. You are yes. enthusiastic about this. So yes, I'm so ready. And it's Mama time. Jordan, so yes. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Lisa. Have a have a good day. Have a good day, guys. Thanks.